everybody, welcome back to the Flannel Channel. I'm Philip. I'm glad you're here. I am passionate about hand-painted lettering and pinstriping. That's actually what inspires me to want to learn to do those things myself. And uh, I'm certainly not a master of it, but I'm trying to improve my skills. Today is kind of a project day for me as I'm making something for my son and his fiance who are getting married next weekend. They wanted to do something a little bit different for the guests at their wedding. I'm hoping that this project will be something that is kind of a keepsake for them that they can have in their home. It's gonna be a fun project. I've been looking forward to this for a while. It's cool in my mind, but let's see if we can make this into a reality. It might turn out to be a complete flop. I don't know, but regardless, it's gonna be entertaining for you. I hope you'll stick around. Let's do this. Let me start off my video by apologizing for any of the audio that's messed up. My wireless microphones aren't working well. So, uh, these are a couple of doors from a 67 to 72 Chevrolet and uh, bought a couple of them from a friend of mine. This one has original paint and uh, I really like those colors on that one. This one has a really cool patina to it. It's been sanded, it's got some rust on it. It's also very, very cool. It's a little bit more complete, has some chrome, has the glass inside and things like that. So this one is significantly heavier transport around this one is lighter but this is the one that I'm going to use uh, for a project and I'm going to keep this one maybe for myself or maybe I'll end up selling it I don't know so keep your eyes open for that but this is the one we're going to focus the main attention on and so I'm going to be putting the door handle on this one I'm going to put the piece of uh, window back in there but not the main glass because i'm going to try and keep this as light as i can because the whole idea is that it's going to be hanging on the wall of their home so uh let's get busy doing that i know we have some rusted fasteners we're going to be dealing with and stuff like that so i might set up the time lapse and basically i'll be gutting both doors down quite a bit but making this one look a little bit nicer at least on the outside anyway let me show you a tool that works out really nicely for getting old stuck fasteners like these Phillips head screws here loose. It's this tool here, it's an impact driver with a Phillips tip on it. And uh, you can get other style tips on there for straight head or uh, Torx bits and things like that. Smack the end with a hammer like that and uh, you're good to go. Time to start thinking about my engine stand for the presentation and how I'm going to attach this to that and put it at a like a 45 degree angle. So yeah, I should be able to come up with something. And out here in the scrap bin, I was digging around and I found a monster satellite dish. I maybe that'll work I don't know I think it'll give me the flexibility that I want and adjustability and it's already on a pipe so I think I'm gonna just try that see if it's strong enough I don't know can't hurt let's give it a shot I think we're winning already just in the simplicity of this and the adjustability none of this is gonna get seen so I'll just mark my four holes, drill them, send some hardware through, and we'll try it. Why not? Here we go. I think we have a winner. I, I like it. That's the height that I wanted. It's the angle that I wanted. It's adjustable the day of. All I'm gonna have to do is keep this adjustable wrench with me and I can, you know, do all kinds of things to it. But yeah, now let's see what the bride and the groom think and uh, I'll definitely have to dress up the uh, 
stand itself. Maybe paint it black. Maybe we'll cover it with something. Maybe we'll wrap some ivy around it. Maybe we'll put some flowers under it. I don't know. It's got to look wedding-ish, you know? I don't know. All right, so here's the design that I come up with. Uh, this is all freehand, and part of the reason I didn't film it is because I was actually using my phone to look at letter and shape designs uh, online, and uh, that kind of helped me get the style of letter that I wanted and get the layout kind of just how I wanted. So anyway, it's very time consuming, and uh, I know you can still make out those letters that were on the door when I got it, but I think those are gonna disappear and uh, you really won't notice them once I get the paint on there. But yeah, so I'm happy with that. Let's mix up some paint. So there we go. It's a single stroke and you kind of get one shot at it. There's a couple spots where it's wide so you can see I had to, you know, use two strokes to get it the width that I wanted. But the whole idea is that I kind of want this to look like it's been on there a long time. So I'm okay with things looking thin and seeing brush marks and stuff like that. In fact, I might go in there just a little bit and age it just by wiping it with a cloth after it's had some time to dry just a little bit. And uh, you can see, I'm gonna get one of my pinstriping brushes and add some flourishes to the ends of some of these and stuff like that. But for the most part, I'm pretty happy with the layout. Um, you can see this straight line right there. I'm gonna try and follow that with a pinstripe. Keep it simple. You know, I might, again, add some flourishes to it here and there and I kind of like the idea of maybe adding some pinstriping in the door jams or something like that that's subtle and uh, might put my own little signature or note or something like that down in one corner. But this is kind of step one, but I'm happy with the results so far, Lo. Let's keep going. Now what I'm using is a lint-free linen cloth and I'm just following the same brush strokes that I just made a few minutes ago, and that's lifting off just a little bit of paint. And that way, it's kind of doing the job that the sun would do over years and years of time. And it's speeding up the process just a little bit because I want some of that green to show through and I want to thin my brush strokes there you can see a little bit on that W that's the look that I want not too much but you can tell where my brush overlapped from one to the next so anyway it's easy to overdo it I don't want to overdo it but just make it look like it's been on there a long time I like it. One change I need to make. This should be 23, not 24. We're not quite to 24 yet. 100% <laughs> my mistake. I just, I don't know why I put a 24, but that's why you always show uh, a photo to someone else and get their opinion. And yeah, so I'm gonna change the four to a three. Hang on just a second. <laughs> we'll just wipe that right off, no big deal. Man. Sure glad I'm not a tattoo artist. That is an easy fix. <laughs> uh, I feel dumb. Oh well. There. That's more like it. Just use my phone as a reference again, making sure I'm staying within my lines might bring it down just a touch more, but 
yeah, still have the paint mixed up. Easy fix. There we go. Fixed. <laughs> I feel dumb, but hey, that could have been a lot worse. What I've done here is mixed up a little bit of black and white together to make some gray. And that's just gonna be a little bit of a drop shadow that's gonna go to the right and below of each of the letters. And it's gonna give it just that extra little bit of pop to really make it stand out. So yeah, black and white makes gray. All right, we are nearly done. I like that, it added some nice character to it. A little bit more depth. I'm gonna do a black outline around all the white and that's gonna really make it pop and it's gonna make the drop shadow stand out even more. So, final step. Right, now it's done. Well, hopefully the kids like this. Uh, I really enjoyed making it for them and I'm excited for next Saturday that uh, hopefully a whole bunch of friends and family will take a silver Sharpie or a paint marker or something like that and write all kinds of love notes to the new young couple and that this can be a keepsake for them in their home for a long, long time and a way for them to remember the special day. So well, here we are just a couple days after the wedding and I'd say that was a huge success. I love to see all the personal notes and signatures and uh, yeah, I'd say it was, a, it was a huge hit. Lots of people made comments and took photos with it and stuff like that and yeah, mission accomplished. So my job now is I'm going to be removing the glass and a little bit of the chrome might tape that piece off. And I'm going to spray some clear coat on top of this and preserve it for the young couple and also try and keep it so that it's not going to make a mess and scar up the walls in their new apartment and things like that. Um, but still look rugged and uh, leave the patina on it. So yeah, let's mix up some clear and get spraying because we're going to run out of some daylight here if I don't hurry. So, All right, there's what I'm using. Mix it up, just using a cheap gun. I'm certainly not a body guy, but just following directions on the can. And I'm just using a regulator that, you know, really isn't ideal, kind of busted it's from a different attachment, but it'll work. I do not have a dryer, that's okay. I do have a mask and it's well ventilated. So let's hook up and get shooting. Perfect. Dry to the touch. I think it looks great. Yeah, and by clear coating the rust, it's not going to leave nasty marks on the wall. You know, there's some rot down in there, but kind of takes sort of the crumbly factor out of it and a little more home friendly that way. So let's put the glass back in and uh, door handle and load it up, take it home. All finished up. I love it. And obviously the young couple has already seen it. Uh, not completely, completely done, but they're not gonna be like surprised by it or anything like that, but pretty cool. I think it's gonna make an awesome addition to their home. Well, hey, thanks for coming along on this episode. It was a fun project to take on and uh, I appreciate you watching to the end of the video. Hey, if this is the kind of content you like to see, let me know. I'm over at Instagram, it's at flannel underscore Philip. And uh, we can chat there if you want to. Otherwise, 
I have tons of other videos that some are artwork, some are old vintage trucks or classic cars and just the kind of stuff that I'm into. Hope you dig it too. Peace and grease.